Corey and I have come out to the greenhouse to do a few things today. One of the things we've got to do is we've got to up-pot our peppers. Here's one tray of them. So they're getting, they've got several leaves now, so I know they need to be put in larger pots. So we're going to do that. We won't leave the peppers out here. We'll take them back inside, put them back under the grow lights. But I do hope to kind of rearrange in here and straighten up and have a place to put my cabbages. And I'm thinking I'm just going to put them out here. I've been putting them outside on the back deck every day that it's not raining. I've been putting them out there. So they've kind of been inside uh, at night and outside during the day. So I think they'll be fine if I go ahead and move them out here. Moving them out here will be so much easier on me because they'll be easier to water without having to worry about the mess. Uh, so that'll be really nice. But the peppers, they'll need to stay in, in for a little bit longer. We've got us a little workstation set up now. We went in and, and got the peppers from inside. You can see how tall they're getting. They've got maybe four leaves, all of them, pretty much all of them. You can also see the ones that didn't, didn't germinate. But we're going to work on putting them in a larger container now so that they can the roots can spread out and they can continue to grow. We're also going to do some experimental things that we've never done. So we'll tell you about that in a minute. But first, we're going to, we're going to get started. Um, swapping them into the larger containers and we're just using red solo cups we use those a lot i use them to start my tomatoes in they seem to work really well um, they have we've used them for i don't know how many years many years at least four or five years so we're just going to put the peppers into them we've got us some sharpies so we'll uh, some of these we've used more than once so some of them that one's already got a pepper name on it but some of them will have to, this is a tomato, we'll have to change them out. And a lot of people, um, and, and you, everybody has to find their own way, but while I'm talking about that, a lot of people, after they finish, if they're going to reuse their, their containers like this, they really go to great lengths to kind of wash them all out and sterilize them and do all that. And I'm sure you probably should do that, but I don't. <laughs> And I've never had an issue. I may, this may be the year that I have it, but I don't do that. But uh, certainly read up on it, do your due diligence and see if you if you decide you need to sterilize. I think there's even like a solution you can soak them in that sterilizes them and all that. So lots of great information out there for sure. So now we're just gonna start. Let's see, Corey, where are you gonna start with this one? You wanna do the writing or the planting or both or you want us to both get one and you do some and I do some yeah whatever you want to do okay well, let's just set this one between us here and we'll both just let's see let's set it this way so we can see and this one we've got this is interesting so our banana sweet pepper not one not one plant so we don't need that then we've got the yolo peppers the cayenne peppers which Matt will be happy about and the California wonder so we don't have any habaneros. Well, I think they'll be in this other one somewhere. In that one, maybe. We'll see. We we'll just have to see how many we end up with. This me. says habaneros. So, so you're I'm lucky. You can I start with that one. Well, yeah, I can do. Yeah, that. you can do that one. Either way you want to, or save your cup and do it that way. Either way you want to. Well, our habaneros didn't come up. None of them. Oh, the horror. We only did oh, two. Oh, yeah, I started to say that one, but you're right. That's a candy cane. We only did two of them. Oh, man. Man, well, we may, we can still plant some more. And what we should do is plant some more out here yeah. and just let them be slow since these are all bigger. We've still got plenty, though, with all these. Okay. So. Okay. Maybe I just need to be getting you dirt. I just wrote a yellow. Okay. Well, ever how you want to do it. Be fine with me. I've got this knees. Doing some dirt feeling. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, goodness. When we were um, in elementary school at Martins Creek, I don't know how we learned this or what, but all us kids said it. When somebody sneezed like that, instead of saying, bless you, we said, Gesundheit. And we thought we were so, uh, like, proud of ourselves for saying that. <laughs> I don't know. Like you but were so, the original. Yeah, <laughs> but we're, of course, weren't. But all these years later, when I sneeze, I think Gazoon High in my head because that's what we said at uh, Martins Creek School when I was little. We took great pleasure in saying that, especially like if it was an adult that sneezed, you know, a teacher or something. Okay, let's see. Mm. See the lovely little roots down there. I think we have one seed thing, Corey, uh, already like this on the porch. We could get it to put our, if we want to do some more peppers. Mm -hmm. 
Look at this right here is a little plant, it's not a pepper, but something in the soil. I don't guess it's a pepper. It don't look like it, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Okay, what are we moved on to now? Cayenne. Cayenne. These are Matt's favorite. Cayennes did really good last year. We dried some, might eat some, and we used some for um, our pickles, various different pickles. On to the California Wonder. I'm still thinking about the habanadas, and I think the reason we only planted two because that was all the seeds there was. Uh -oh, and, they didn't come on. and I didn't order any more either. So. Maybe missing them this year. Okay, which ones are we doing now? Golden Marconi. Uh -huh. you, just, you just take that out of hand. Oh, okay. Do you? So those did good and they grow really good for us so that's a good thing all of them sprouted this sounds like golden macaroni <laughs> golden macaroni yeah That was all the ones that really that I started. Now the next ones are the ones that Corey started. And look how good hers did. There's a plant in every cell. So you did really good. Thanks. Every cell. So she's got, let's see, what's this? Violet Sparkle. Mmm, that sounds neat. Carolina Wonder instead of California. Orange, King of the North. Which is a red one. And Purple Beauty. I just so. thought Purple Pepper sounded really cool. Yeah. <laughs> purple. What is that? I'm thinking about something else. Yeah, something. Purple people eater. Something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's a song, silly song about something it or about something. Yeah. Pickled pepper picked or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so we'll do yours. So I'm going to have orange peppers, purple peppers, and red peppers. Mm -hmm. No green. Well, all of them will be probably be green first, and you could eat them, you know. That's true. I like colored peppers better. Seems like, did you tell me or somebody told me that when they're colored, they're easier to digest? Or somebody told you that? Yeah, someone told me that the green ones weren't technically ripe. I know a lot of people probably would argue with that. And I'm not saying that it's the gospel truth, but that's just what yeah. someone told me one time. So the, therefore the other so ones the would be easier to digest. So the others are easier to digest? Yeah. It's hard to wait when they first start coming in, though, and they're green and pretty. And, mm. I know. Last year, our peppers did so good. I hope they do this year. But we had we had red and green and yellow, and uh, we didn't have any purple like Corey's trying. What else did we have? Oh, we had the candy cane striped one. That was neat. How do you say yellow again? Yellow. Yellow. I say yellow. I think I say yellow. I say yellow. Some people say yeller. Yeller. Yeah. They put the ER, but I say yellow with an A. Yeah, oh. I said. Go ahead. I'm going to take one of these gloves off because okay. I can't feel nothing. There you go. It's because the soil so damp that they're falling apart. Look how long that root is. See, that's Whoa. needing to be. So is this an orange? Yes. I say yellow. And Wanda. Yeah. But you didn't say you didn't say it like that that time. That's why I wanted to Oh, repeat how it. did I say you it? You said yellow. Uh, well, probably because yellow. when I was thinking about reading it, 
if I read I, in my mind, I'm not sure. I think I hear yellow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't know. So I was probably reading it off that. That's what made me say yellow. That's another orange. Okay. I do know what you mean. It's interesting, though. I've had a lot of people ask me, well, then how did your... Uh, didn't your teachers, you know, if you spelled like that, didn't you make bad grades? Well, most people that talk like I do, they don't, they spell the correct way if they're writing something. Uh, they're going to spell it correctly instead of the way they talk. They're going to, you know. I did one time when I was in about the eighth grade, way old enough to know better, decide that I was going to start spelling how I talked. Did you? It didn't go over well with my teachers, <laughs> as you might imagine. I bet, yeah. Oh, we're going to run out. We've run out of the tray now. We're going to have to find uh -oh. us another one. This well, let's just use this one for right, right now. Or this one. We'll see. Those are both king of ours. Okay. Get those roots there hanging down, mm -hmm. too. They were ready to be... Need some new living quarters so they can stretch out. They were ready to move into their own place. Yeah. Ready to move out for Mom and Dad. Yep, or brothers and sisters, or whatever you want to call them. spread their wings. Okay, first task accomplished. So now that we've got the chore of the peppers, that had to be done today. So now we've got that completed. And I don't know, Corey, did you count? How many did we end up with? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 13. So there's 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So between me and Corey and Granny, that'll be that'll be plenty of peppers. A lot of peppers. A lot of peppers, yeah. Of course, something might happen to, you know, you never know with plants. Something might happen to one of these. They might die. Uh, when we plant them outside, you never know what's going to happen to them. But that's good. I feel good about that. So I don't know that we need to start any out here. Probably not. Probably not. that will probably be good for our pepper production. If we visit a nursery or something, we might pick up a plant here or there. Yeah. So, one thing I've always been interested in, but I have never done. Of course, I have the greenhouse. Uh, a problem, a lot of people ask, why don't we grow in the greenhouse in the winter? Our problem is, because we live on the north side of the mountain, and the way the sun goes across the sky in the winter time, it hardly hits here. So, the greenhouse doesn't get any sun barely any. Now this time of the year, as the days go forward, more and more it hits the greenhouse just because the way the sun goes across the sky changes. In fact, this morning when I went out to let the chickens out, I thought, oh my, am I late? What's going on? Because it was a little bit lighter. Uh, did he? And I, I was walking like through the yard thinking, I thought I got up a little earlier this morning. What's going on? And then I thought, oh, I bet I'm noticing that it's just a little bit, a little bit brighter outside. Better. Okay, we had our battery die, so we had to stop and start again. But we were talking about the day getting brighter already this morning. And then Corey reminded me it's not that long until the time changes. Um, actually, on Corey and Austin's anniversary. Is yeah. that when it does? Mm -hmm. March yeah. 12th. Yeah. So, anyway, that's why we don't grow in the greenhouse year-round. But this time of the year, we can start growing in it. Now, later in the summer, while we don't grow in it, you think, well, you could just keep growing. But we don't have any way to, uh, we do have the fan back there, and we run it once um, it starts getting really warm in here. But during the hot days of July and August and June even and end of May, it's just way too hot in here. Um, so we don't really grow in, in here then either. Mostly we use it for starting our seedlings, and it does wonderful for that. Before I started, before Matt built the greenhouse many years ago now, we would um, either buy our tomato plants or when I first started growing tomatoes from seeds, I had a had access to a greenhouse over at one of the local schools and I could use it. So I did that maybe two years and then I lost access to that. So then Matt decided he would build us one. So that's how, how we come to have a greenhouse. And we knew in the beginning that that's what it was you know, primarily going to be for. Now, I do wish I had room, like if I had a big flat area with bright sunshine, I'd love to have a high tunnel and be able to roll the sides up and grow during the summer and especially grow during the winter time. I would just have greens and brassicas going all winter long. But anyway, we're very thankful for what we have. So, but one thing I've always wanted to try, that's why I went down the rabbit hole in the squirrel trail of the greenhouse, is I've always wanted to try, if you've ever seen people growing in, this is going to be really drippy, isn't it? Growing in 
milk jugs like this it's kind of like your like a mini greenhouse if you think about it so it's you'll hear it we've been soaking them in water so they're dripping but you'll hear it called like winter growing a lot but it's really just a way to start your little seedlings in there it's just a milk jug and i just cut it and opened it up now i've never tried this before so i'm not i'm not not only am i not an expert i've never even done it before so this is my first time trying it but i've always been fascinated by it so it's kind of like think of a cold frame outside i've always wanted one of those too but you can kind of make your own by doing this so you make it with a little where it kind of opens up we've got soil in there we've been soaking it in water and then once you plant your seeds you tape tape back this so it kind of keeps all that uh, moisture inside but also that you know it helps protect it as far as heat goes um, or as far, far as cold weather goes so we only have three but we're going to try three and just see what happens yeah well and then we have a um, this one's really dripping we have just a little plastic container that let us come in so we're going to try it too but if you have experience please leave a comment and tell us you know tell us all about it i've seen you can do a search on youtube here and find all kinds of information about it all kinds of tips and tricks and a lot of people that grow all kinds of stuff in it um some people i think leave like they grow their lettuces during the winter like that and then just snip it off and keep it keep it growing and eat it but lots of people start do all their starts like this and part of the reason I was so fascinated by it is I heard so many stories from Pap. If you think about like when he was a boy, nobody had a greenhouse. Neither could you go to the local, you know, feed store or whatever and buy your starts. People had to start all their stuff themselves. And he's told me stories of how his grand, his mother, uh, my mamma, my grandmother, how she would start seeds like maybe her tomato seeds. She would do them first. They would burn something. That was one way. They would burn a little area, then plant the seeds, then cover it with like a sheet or something, and then uncover it and cover it back up. And that that warmth of the soil, warming the soil up, give it a give them a jump start on germinating. But also for her tomato seeds, she would plant them like under the edge of the porch kind of. Now this would depend on where you lived. I couldn't do this because I have no sunshine. But the sun really shone in under the porch. So she'd start them right there. But then the overhang protected them. So that was how she started her tomatoes. Anyway, I've always been fascinated by all that. Uh, and I've shared with you lots of times my fascination with volunteers, how me and Corey are going to all this trouble. You know, we've this will be the second like time we've handled these peppers, and um, then there'll be the third time of actually putting them in the garden. And then right beside them, or our tomatoes or whatever, there'll be a volunteer come up. And it'll just be beautiful and vigorous and wonderful. And it will have, you know, it, it laid out there all by itself. It just dropped and laid through the cold, through any snow we had, through all the rain, through the dogs, uh, whatever, and us walking, and then it sprung up and did wonderful. So always fascinating to think about um, the miracle of a seed, and sometimes how they seem to do better when when we we're not involved, <laughs> which is which is funny. Anyway, so we're going to plant a few things in here, and then once they're planted, we'll tape up that part that's cut open. I think I said that. Um, and again, I'm not, not even an expert because I've never done it before. So do a quick search and you'll find all kinds of videos with tips and tricks. And I think, I don't know, Corey, what are we going to plant in them? What did, what happened to the seeds? We brought some seeds out here thinking about stuff. Some of them are flowers. And, uh, then we've got some other containers in here that are not covered at all. But I think we might go ahead and just for the fun of it, plant a few flowers in them and just see what happens. Just leave them in here. Leave them out here in the cold. But did we want flowers? We don't have we don't have many choices for sure. And a, another thing that happened, a, a decision for us to make is um, with our grading for Thomas to get to this back area. There was a couple of reasons he needed to get there. Well, several actually. One was, of course, he needed to get the brush that they were cutting off this back area. There was a big log up there that he needed to get. And then there was a huge brush pile that we had just been throwing stuff on for literally years and we'd never burned it or anything. So while he was here, it'd be really handy just to help him get that, let him get that. And then of course he could make us a bed there. So there was all those reasons. But the closest he could get was right on top of our herb bed. So I'm the one that made the decision. Yeah, bye bye herb bed. I said, no, I'd rather you do the bank 
and not worry about the herb bed. So I will sacrifice it to to actually have the, all that work done. So that's what I did. So the herb bed is no more. It's some done. of yeah, some of it might done. might come back. Um, all of it we can replant though. I mean the it had the things we would miss is the valerian, the lemon balm, the oregano. It often dill would reseed itself. Lavender. There was some lavender in it. What else was in it? There was a plant that we hate that was in it. I won't miss that. Uh, did you have uh, and Katie, cilantro? Yeah, cilantro usually reseeded itself and come back. And then Katie had got a red um, bee balm somewhere on her travels last year, and she brought it home, roots and all, and it was in there, and it had lived. And um, the bloom had fell off, and I said, I bet we have bee balm there next year, but no, <laughs> there'll be no bee balm. And then there was a plant uh, that had never bloomed, but had been there like for at least three years. And my dear friend Jim Cassidy gave it to me, and I can't remember off the top of my mind what the name of it is. And it's just a flower; it wasn't a herb. But now it's because I was like last year, it got to the biggest it had gotten. I thought, I bet next year it'll bloom, but no, it's not going to bloom. It's gone. So we might either we're going to plant some herbs in here, or we're going to have to think about that later on. So you help me decide what you want to try. Could do. Let's try the calendula and those things over there. You could do one or two herbs and mostly flowers because since it's so early, yeah, you might kind of save some of the herb seeds to later. And like flowers. basil, we could direct so for sure. Yeah. What about rosemary? You want to try one? We could. Or or clary sage or chamomile. We try if chamomile. If we try chamomile, I want to try this. Is already warm. Okay. Chamomile. So maybe a rosemary. Snapdragon, poppy mix. Poppies we can go out and throw around. Can't oh, I want to try bad. that one in here. Coneflower. I used to have purple coneflower. Come back every year for, I don't know, three or four or five years. This is years ago. And then all of a sudden it was gone, and I replant it, and I replant it, and I replant it, and I can never get it to grow. And so last year, did I even buy a plant of it? And it seems didn't live. Like it. Yeah. Says it repels, do you? Oh, I should definitely plant it everywhere then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, fever few. I always want that. Yeah, we never. It never does it good go. either. Maybe we'll try it in there or in that little one. Basil, oregano, lemon balm, chamomile. Which chamomile was it you were talking oh, about? That one. Okay. So this version, what's called, I'm assuming, Zaudi Lawn, is how I would pronounce yeah. that chamomile. This is not a typical variety that you see. You usually see Roman or German, but this is supposed to be easily self sows and it's a Polish variety, and it's really supposed to just be easy to grow because okay. we've never been able to yeah, grow chamomile very can. well. And last year we bought plants at our friends, the Sat Satterfield. Uh, what's the name of their place, though? Satterfield Briar Patch. Briar Patch, like yeah. Satterfield, Satterfield's Briar Patch. And we hope to go back there yes. again this year, and so we'll be sure to to share that with you. Um, but anyway, w they lived a little while and then they died. I harvested flowers. I still oh, I didn't even get to that point. Off mine. It did great and then the next day dead. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, okay, well, we'll wait on all these. So, let's see. Since it's frost tardy, so it'd probably do okay in these. Okay. All right. You want to plant, plant you some of that in that little one and there. Yeah, and then we'll see what happens. And I'm wondering, should we put ours outside? Most people do put their, their milk jugs outside. Um, but since we have the greenhouse, yeah, and we could just set them in here somewhere probably. See what happens. It says just to surface so when you think about it like that. Yeah, and then just sprinkle them and then maybe pat gently. It's kind of hard to do. Yeah, and we can move them out of that water now. Probably they've probably got enough um, enough water on them. I'm gonna move your gloves right there. So you think just pat? Yeah, I think just pat. Said surface. So I mean, they may still they may be um, exposed, but well, I guess that meant I mean that means I think that they need light to germinate. Some stuff does. So okay, I'm gonna do go for the cone flower and see what happens. All right. Now he'll be ready to tape. Yeah. Will we leave this hole in the top as a water hole? Um, 
that was the thing I read lots of different stuff one thing is if you if you just poured which is what I would do just pour water down the hole it's gonna the way the milk jug is it's probably gonna like disperse your seeds so you probably don't want to do that but we made drainage holes on the bottom and then we just set them in water so we'll probably water them from the bottom and just let them wick up because if you you think about it if you just poured yeah. straight down that hole it would it's be so normal. yeah it wouldn't spread out there's no way to like spread it with a sprinkler you could probably maybe spray it you could open it back up and spray it but that might be a pain if you had the lids to these milk drugs you could put the lid on it and just have it really be a greenhouse yeah well i thought that when i was researching i thought well they probably leave the lid on but everything i read said they I left said the, leave it off. but it was because most people put them outside and if you leave the lid off then if it rains or snows moisture yeah. would naturally get in it so okay i think that's enough for that i am going to cover mine up just a tad oh here's some dirt oh i got some right here oh. Corey. Mm -hmm. so what about we got two more we got this guy oh and the other thing is we should definitely ride on them what they oh, are oh yeah that's that's a good idea yeah what did i do with that blue sharpie that i had oh, oh, yeah. oh i found it using my thing And I also seen where some people said this, if you did put it outside, a marker did not really last good. So you might need to do something else with it. And then we'll tape them, tape them back up. We could leave ours sitting in here for yeah. a little bit. I think I hear rain. Is it raining on us? Sounds like it's trying to. I thought it was supposed to not rain today. I okay. Think it was either. So you want to tape them up? Yep. And we got two more to plant in. Okay. Let's see what we need. Go duct tape. Get to it oh. over there. Ooh. Okay. Thank you. Now, what do we want to do? So we did the cone flower, and we did the. So we do the fever few, or we tried it a million times too. Um, we could try it now and then look for a start of it at the nursery and increase our chances. And we could do, and we'll do both these in this little. So, Fever View says to actually cover it up. It doesn't. You know, I think, well, you yeah. I started, I could just see this side. I was like, I think that's good, but I forgot there's another side to it. Almost, now that I've planted these, I'm almost tempted to take this one. I'd have to set it in something, but to take it inside and put it under a heat mat, the fever few. I know. You have to sit it in something oh. since it's so wet. Since we've already got this, the apparatus set up, we might do that. So what else would I put in it? Oh, I said I was going to put rosemary in the other one, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Have one more? Mm, yeah. Another big jug. Okay. Are we ever going to remember? Maybe the video will help us remember we planted Fever Few and Rosemary in this one. We can ride. Well, not really. Yeah, it's so wet we can't really ride on this one. Both took our gloves off and now we're dirty. I need to wonder if I can use one of these little trays that we were using before. Maybe we'll take that one back inside. So now what are we 
we're going to put in that one. What do you think? Um, so we've done all herbs so far. Do you want to keep it up or do a... Do you want to do lemon balm since all yours is gone? Or do you want to do a fire? Uh, lemon balm would probably be smart. I'm tempted by the flowers, but let's try the lemon balm. Once you get lemon balm, at least for us, it just spreads and does really good. And it was so good in our kefir water last year. We so enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Um, so, but again, it's no more <laughs> to put. Okay. Let's see, I don't know if it said. Didn't really tell. I tell you, you got water just yeah. so it don't get on your pants. Okay, it says surface. That's what I was looking for. I figured. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Just tamp it down a little bit. If anyone has any chamomile growing secrets or secrets for growing beaver few, let us know. I tried, to ride, I tried to ride upside down and I think I, I, wrote, I look over and you're like, I'm like, what's she doing right here? I was just trying and my brain don't work upside down, I can tell you that. Yeah, so it doesn't. Even, mine don't even work right side up most of the time. So we did end up with a few pots that we went ahead and did just for the fun of it and seeing. It's really early. Calendula, we're going to plant two pots of it, and it can take a little bit of cold, so I think it'll be fine in here. What we're going to put in this one is catnip, and it actually says it needs to be cold before it actually germinates uh, later when it warms up. So we're going to plant it, and we'll probably set it back outside so that it can, it can be cold. And it's got the tiniest little seeds, so we'll see if we can... Put some in here. We had catnip, Corey tells me, for, and I do think I remember it, on the bank, not where Thomas was at. This was before Thomas. And uh, something happened to it. Corey says it's all gone. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes that happens with plants, like my coneflower that I was talking about. So these are the cabbage. You can see how good they're doing. How Look, that one's got four little leaves. We're going to leave them out here. I'm not going to take them back and forth like I've been doing. I've been putting them on the back porch or back deck. We do need to water them before we leave, but we're just going to leave them in here. And hopefully they'll grow. And in the next, you know, two weeks or something, we'll be ready to plant them outside, which is really exciting. But they're doing really good. You can see that one looks especially good. Some of them are... Um, when we up-potted them, there was a few that hadn't come up, and we replanted, if I remember right, Corey. Does that seem right? Mm -hmm. So that's probably one of the ones we replanted. Uh, but they're overall looking really good. We love to, to grow calendula. Uh, Corey and Katie first taught me about it. It has a wonderful medicinal property. Um, they make an oil. You can make, you can buy it too at your health food store or somewhere like that. Corey says she likes the seeds because they look like, um, they look like seashells or little octopus legs. Yeah, I couldn't think of octopus. That's what I was trying to think of, little octopus le legs. I think Which they look like weird. Uh, seahorses. Yeah. Yeah, something from the sea. Yeah. So we're just going to plant a few in here. And this is, um, uh, we've grew this one before, Pacific Beauty. And I think they're all edible, are they? I don't know if they're if we've ever ate them. Uh, I think it depends. I know I definitely heard from some people that you should not ingest um, calendula, okay. but I know they are in the marigold family. I just know of it as a topical kind of yeah, remedy, which works amazingly well. Yeah, it's great for your skin. I mean, it's really, really amazing. Uh, in fact. Corey or Katie used some on me yesterday. I had a place. I don't know what's come up. I, Corey thinks I was allergic to deodorant. deodorant that I was using. And I've used it for a long, long time, but 
she said I could develop a toxicity to it, and I guess that's what it was because it's bio better today. Yeah, bioaccumulation. But did I leave one under? Poke him in there. There you go. There. So anyway, the calendula oil, like always, made me feel better. Is that one? Yeah, maybe. I need to do a better job. Okay. So this is a different, just a different kind, uh, an orange, but it's supposed to be very valuable for its high uh, content. I'm actually, there's hardly, we've planted it several years, there's hardly any left. I think this time I'm just going to try pushing them down. Corey said I missed a few in that other one. Yeah, just poke them in there. Corey and Katie have a real good friend. Uh, we used to tease her because, and not we should not be the one to tease people because we say all kinds of stuff wrong. What was it earlier? You we were saying yeller, yeah. But she said calendula, yeah. She's, and I've heard other people say that too. So it's just a different way of. She was from uh, Carrollton, so, Georgia. Oh, no, just she a said different calendula. Yeah, she liked it too. She thought it yeah. was um, great medicinal properties. Okay, we'll see if that how that does in here in the greenhouse. It's so early, but me and Corey to be planting, but me and Corey's just got we've got spring fever, yeah. gardening fever. I'm like it's just summer next week, right? <laughs> so Corey and I got a lot done today, and I'm really pleased. I'm especially pleased with the peppers. That was the main thing that we wanted to do was to up pot them into larger containers so they can keep growing and grow larger so they'll be ready to put out in a, in a few months so that was really exciting it's also fun to kind of try new things so i love i've never tried the the milk jug uh containers that we made today i don't even know if i'll ever make it again but it's lots of fun just to try something new like that and see what happens because you never know you might stumble on something that you really like and you'll you'll continue to do it you know from now on this time of the year is a, is a really exciting time of the year for me, for anyone that gardens, because you start dreaming about all the every day, like we were talking about the daylight getting brighter, every getting earlier, daylight being earlier. Every day brings you closer to that warmth when you can really just be out in the garden and be gardening. For me, this time of the year always makes me think of Pap. Um, of course, I think about him a lot, uh, as you might guess, just like you do your loved ones who are no longer with you. But when I start gardening, that's every year, all the years I've gardened, there's still stuff that I wish I could go in and call him and say, Daddy, what, about, what do you think about this? What did you do? You know, how do I do this? What do you think? What's your experience with this? So many things that make me wish I could call him. Uh, lots of times, but especially this time of the year when we start gardening, I always think of him because he's the one, him and Granny, who taught me to love gardening. Uh, they love. They taught me just to love to be to be out in the outdoors and how wonderful it was to feel the sunshine on you, to see the corn growing, to the for the beans to grow. Granny and her wonderful love of picking beans and putting up beans, um, all those wonderful feelings of of actually growing food for your family and 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 being more self sufficient, but also being just that it was so much better for you to be outdoors and to have that exercise and then to eat that wonderful good good food it's the best eating of the year so all those things just of course would naturally uh, bring pap to mind i did have a little bit of him with me today while corey and i were out here working when i first come out to i uh, brought the milk jugs out i knew i had to cut them well i have an old serrated knife i've had it for years it come i don't remember if it come with a kitchen set of knives or if somebody give it to me it was supposed to be a kitchen knife and I never used it for that. And one day when I was working out in the yard, I just happened to think that would be really good uh, to saw with. Sometimes clippers work. Sometimes it's something that's kind of too big for a clipper, but not big enough to actually, you know, you need a chainsaw or an axe or something like that. So I started using that serrated knife to cut things like that. And I've literally been using it for years. Matt and the girls all kind of make fun of me. I'll lose it. I'll leave it in a bed here or there and worry about it till I, till I find it and get it back. Anyway, when I come out here, I just thought I would use it. Well, once I got started, kind of, I thought, no, that's way too big, and that's just going to be a mess. I can't do that. So I went back in the house, and I come out with my, one of my favorite, favorite pocket knives. This was Pap's knife. It's a Camillus. Camillus knife. It's old. 
but it's got a great story that goes with it. I don't remember him carrying it. I don't remember anything about it. I don't remember ever seeing it, although I probably did. I was probably with him. He would have it in his pocket with his change, and he would uh, worry it, worry his pocket. Sometimes you could hear his change and his knives kind of hitting together. But several years back, oh, I don't know, three or four, something like that, my older brother Steve come up to see me and Matt one day, and we sat on the couch and talked for a little bit, and then he said, I've brought you something of Daddy's I want to give you. And I said, really? Okay, what is it? And so he pulled out this knife. Now, the, knife, the blade, that blade that I just had out, was broke. It was just snapped off all the way down to the thing. And I said, where in, he said, this was Daddy's knife. And I said, where in the world did you get it? Where have you had it for a long time? You know, I've just, please tell me the story. He said, well, years ago, there was a, a, a young man in the community and he was, he decided he was going to be a knife maker. He was going to, he was going to repair knives. That's what he was going to do, pocket knives. That was in the days when most everybody carried a pocket knife, uh, especially men. And so he wanted, of course, he wanted to practice. He wanted to learn more. So he went around to the men at church and said, if you've got a pocket knife, um, I'll take it from you and I'll fix it and I'll bring it back to you and, uh, if it's broke, you know. So lots of men give him, give him knives. And he didn't actually ever fix most of them. I'm sure time got away from him. Maybe he was young, he started doing something else, you know. Or maybe he fixed some and didn't, just didn't get the others fixed. Anyway, years later, another man at church ended up with those knives. And I guess the gentleman, the first man had kept names with whose was whose. And this was Jerry Wilson's. <laughs> so he had it. He come in, into all the knives and, and got a hold of them. And he, he brought it to Steve at church and said, here, this was your daddy's knife. And, and it was broke off and all that. But uh, Steve, it's funny, he told me, said, the first thing I said was wonder how Daddy broke it, wonder what he was doing when he broke the, the blade on it. And Steve said, oh, I don't know, Daddy's always awful hard on all his knives, so there ain't no telling what he was doing. Um, anyway, so that was, I was tickled to death to get it, just to know that it was Paps, and then know that it had that interesting story that it went from one friend of the family to another friend of the family back to Steve in, you know, it'd probably been 30 years while it was taking all those travels. So uh, last year, I guess it was about last year, I found somebody finally that was able to fix it for me. And they did a wonderful job, and I'm really grateful for them uh, that they fixed it. So now it's my, my favorite pocket knife. It's funny I say that because I really just have two pocket knives. I have this one, and I have the one that Matt got me when we were dating. And I carry that one in my purse. I carry it everywhere I go. And I leave this one here so that I have it handy. Uh, but since I'm missing Pap always this time of the year, kind of nice to actually use something that was his today while I was working. As always, I hope you'll continue to drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of making a garden to feed my family and a whole lot of stories like the one about Pap's knife.